Very good. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to give a talk here. So I will talk today uh, about a work we've done a couple of years ago with Andrei Chubukov and Laura Klassen. And uh, this is one of the first papers in the series of uh, or work interested by Larry Graffin. So if you're interested, please take a look at the other ones. So a very brief introduction, as we all know, Twisted by Larry Graffin is a very interesting system. It exhibits multiple correlated phenomena such as insulating states for integer fillings, mostly prominent shown for a half filling, but also some signatures at nucleus one, three, and so on. Uh, those states are surrounded by metallicity or metallic states around, and a large part of the phase diagram of Twisted by Larry Graffin is actually metallic. Whether it's a normal metal or a strange metal is a separate question. Uh, what is also important to us is that scanning tunneling microscopy measurements show the signatures of divergent density of states, which might be attributed to one host singularities in the electronic spectrum. And those singularities were predicted both in the first principle calculations, in the continuous models and tight binding models. So we assume that they're present somewhere. But what is most important for my talk today is the presence of superconductivity with a maximal TC observed for about three Kelvin for hole doping. This is essentially this large dome. And uh, it was also shown that allegedly superconductivity appears in many different parts of the phase diagram. But maybe what is even more fascinating is that sometimes superconductivity appears without any uh, in correlated insulating behavior in certain samples. The question is, uh, what is the twist angle there and what is the substrate? But anyway, superconductivity might appear even without the correlated insulating behavior. That makes it uh, even more interesting. Uh, there are also experimental reports of the rotational symmetry break in the superconducting dome, the large one which has TC of the order three Kelvin. So what I show here is the data of the critical, of the angular dependent of the critical current, which exhibits the twofold symmetry, instead of having a threefold symmetry, which is compatible with the lattice rotational symmetry. And this means that superconductivity likely breaks a rotational symmetry. Now, this is an interesting question because those states appear in uh, different uh, materials and mechanisms might be really different. So we'd like to dig into this uh, a little bit more. So in our work, we approach the problem from a little bit of a different perspective. We study everything within the uh, Fermi-like paradigm. Uh, the reason is twofold. So first of all, let me just show the uh, simple band structure uh, of, a, of an oversimplified uh, two valley, two spin, and uh, two layer model. So basically these two bands, uh, these four bands, they're each of the bands are spin degenerate. They show the lowest energy or narrow bands of twisted bilayer graphene. Now one can notice that depending on the tight binding parameters, uh, the bands might be somewhat particle hole asymmetric. And this essentially could mean that, for instance, if we dope the system with electrons and reach the one hope doping, we will have only six uh, one hole points. However, if we start doping with holes or vice versa, depending on the parameters, we can get 12 one hole points. So one hole points are important because at this point, the density of state diverges and even weak coupling becomes uh, more and more important for the interaction effects. So we will study the 12 point case here because for six one hole points, we reproduce known results D plus ID superconducting state. This state is chiral, but it doesn't break rotational symmetry. So today I will only focus on this case. So what do we do? We introduce a patch model. So we consider only fermions living around those one hole points. Overall, we have 12 patches and every color here means a valley because valley is essentially quantum number assigned to a band and the intervalley scattering is negligible here. So we have valley polarized uh, the spinless time reversal symmetric bands. And what I mean by spinless is that if I take uh, a fermion from a blue patch and change K to minus K, I end up with a fermion on the red patch. We then introduce uh, all relevant couplings uh, and there are only five relevant couplings to superconductivity. They're shown here. These are density density or exchange interactions. Again, valleys never mix, so I cannot take a a blue fermion and move it to the red patch. Now we need to come up with an interaction model. 
So we know that in twisted bilayer graphene, interactions are way more interesting than in the standard Haber model because they include the assisted hopping terms as was shown by Kangen Wafik and the others. So in simple words, the interaction Hamiltonian consists of three parts. One is the uh, in, um, extended Hubbard model basically includes the density-density interactions on side and between uh, each and every two sides within a given hexagon. The other term is essentially assisted hopping. So uh, these are correlated hoppings of two electrons within a given hexagon. And there is also a mixed term where an electron basically scatters of a density fluctuation, again, within a given hexagon. This overall complex Hamiltonian, which uh, can actually be, be written in a simplified form, it's a square of a certain operator, and this operator consists of two parts. This Q is basically just a density operator, and T is the assisted hopping operator. So Q is C dagger C on the same side, and T is C dagger on one side and C on another side. And the relative importance of those two terms is rendered by this parameter alpha T, which has a numerical value, but for our purposes, we would like to keep it as a, the only free parameter of our theory. Now, whether we're in the strong coupling or in, uh, in the weak coupling is controlled by this parameter V naught, and we assume that we are rather far away from the strong coupling, so probably somewhere near the moderate one or weak one. Okay, so with this, we can now write down the set of coupled gap equations. The pairing, uh, the Cooper pairing happens between different valleys because uh, one valley and another valley, one valley is located at K point and they are there at minus K point. Uh, therefore, the structure of those equations is um, theoretically simplified. And then we can solve for our eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. The eigenvalues will be uh, functions of this parameter alpha T, which gives us a, a way of understanding what this uh, alpha T actually promotes. We classify all the uh, channels by means of reducible representations of the point group D3. And uh, essentially what we get is that depending on this alpha parameter, we can get two channels being attractive. And these channels are the two component irreducible representation E and a single component irreducible representation A2. Those correspond to the following form factors. So the two component are four theta harmonics, sine and cosine, and A2, a six theta harmonic. And note that we can get attraction in those channels with just non-zero alpha T already at the bare level. So we don't need to invoke a con Lattinger mechanism. We can get attraction just from those assisted hopping terms. So what we get here is uh, we get two attractive channels with similar TC and they are completely degenerate. They have the same TC at this point. So we would like to study the vicinity of this point and see what is the ground state. To do that, we need to go down in temperature and actually derive the Landau functional. Uh, so the Landau functional looks like this, but what is important, it looks kind of um, long, but what is important is that the first part is the most standard and conventional result where every order parameter uh, coupled via um, bilinear biquadratic coupling to another. So you have a square of one order parameter, it's coupled to the square of another order parameter. But an interesting feature here is that there is an unusual delta term where the cube of E order parameter is coupled linearly to the uh, A2 order parameter. And this term is actually allowed by symmetry and is a signature of uh, C3 uh, rotationally invariant systems. So let's see what this term gives us. So first we consider the free energy without this term just to understand what's going on. So if we minimize the free energy, the approximate phase diagram as a function of alpha T would look like this. So we have two regions of pure order parameters. So one is A2 or six theta doesn't break uh, time reversal, doesn't break, break rotational symmetry. We have this uh, E plus IE, which is an analog of D plus ID state. It does break time reversal, but doesn't break rotational symmetry. And then we have a big dome of coexistence phase. And it turns out that uh, the overall uh, order parameter there has an uh, additional emergent symmetry and it the symmetry prohibits the uh, rotational symmetry break. So the symmetry corresponds to freedom in relative phase of uh, these different order parameters. And it turns out that the pneumatic state is not achieved here. Now let us include uh, the uh, delta term and see what's going on. So in simple words, uh, what I can say is this. So this delta term downgrades this accidental degeneracy, which was here. The symmetry was U1 cross U1. 
it downgrades this accidental U1 symmetry down to three equal minima. And this can be understood uh, uh, with the proper parametrization because this term will be proportional to basically sine six uh, theta. So it will have six minima. And those six minima correspond to the three minima of the C3 rotational symmetry break corresponding to three, three different directions and the time reversal. So overall six minima. Uh, and then depending on the sign, uh, oh, sorry, on the magnitude of this delta term of the prefactor, one can have two situations. So for small delta, the coexistence phase is uniform. So you always have broken time reversal symmetry and broken rotational symmetry. Another important feature is that this delta term renders the transition to be of the first order from the side of the E plus IE uh, superconducting order parameter. So if we, uh, in this region of alpha values and we uh, go down in temperature, first uh, this chiral superconductor appears and then there is a first order transition to this coexistence phase with broken C3. But if delta is large, there is a potential for another C3 broken state to appear within this coexistence dome. And this C3 broken state has actually time reversal being preserved. So in this case, the C3 manifold becomes uh, aligned basically in the complex plane, those order parameters, they have either identical phase or the opposite phase. And this means that the order parameter is essentially real and time reversal is preserved. Therefore, C3, yeah, C3 remains broken, uh, but time reversal is preserved. Let me just show you the examples of uh, total gap functions. So uh, uh, A, B, and C correspond to the most left, middle, and most right region of the coexistence phase. And we see that in the left part, time reversal is broken and C3 is broken. We see that the modulation is twofold symmetric, not threefold symmetric, and the state is fully gapped. If time reversal is preserved, we can have actually nodal state. And the number of nodes uh, is either eight or 12, depending on the ratio between uh, between the uh, uh, order parameter magnitudes of E and A2. And for the most right uh, uh, region, we have a fully gapped state, but we, you see there are dip, dips uh, here and the state is still uh, not C3 symmetric by C2 symmetric. So this can be, uh, this can serve as a way to distinguish those different states in maybe possible ARPAS experiments. So with this, let me flash my conclusions. So we studied a low energy model with 12 one-hoof singularities. Uh, we used uh, this kind of graphic type interaction. It's quite an unusual and local interaction and it stimulates superconductivity already at the bare level of interactions. Uh, we got that there is a coexistence phase of three order parameters and this coexistence, uh, coexistence phase breaks C3 lattice rotational symmetry and let's do pneumatic superconductivity. So pneumaticity below the superconductivity. Uh, thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much, Dimitri, for the nice talk. Uh, we have time for a couple of questions. Okay, the first one from Nicola. Um, actually, it was not a question, it was just a yeah, <laughs> tapping. It's, it's slightly different the symbol, sorry. Oh, okay, my bad. Uh, Okay, then I have a question uh, about sure. your uh, last point here in the in the conclusion. So it seems mm -hmm. that you need this coexistence in order to be able to have uh, pneumaticity. Is mm -hmm. it like a necessary condition, or uh, are there some? I mean, yeah. Can you comment good. on that? Sure. So uh, this is one of the ways to get pneumaticity here, and this is a purely electronic way of getting pneumaticity in a sense that uh, this comes from the competition of two order parameters, superconducting order parameters. So one can have a coexistence of a normal state, uh, which breaks, break, breaks lighter to rotational symmetry and a superconducting state in principle, right? So if superconductivity develops on top of some uh, Pomeranchuk order mm -hmm. and uh, they might get coupled and this might lead to rotational symmetry break. Uh, there were studies like that, but in our work, we considered only the effect of superconductivity in each other. So that's like the, uh, the main takeaway, but you're totally right. There are different ways to get pneumaticity there. Okay, thank you very much. Other questions? I can ask a question quickly. Uh, so, so the interaction, uh, electron electron interaction, what's the source of it? Maybe you told, but maybe- can, can Oh, you... sure, sure. So uh, you mean this kind of type of interaction, right? 
this unusual yeah. hemoglobin. Yeah, so the uh, source of it is uh, the very peculiar structure of Bonilla functions uh, on this more, more super lattice, this so-called uh, fidget spinner. I, I am not sure if I have pictures here, but basically uh, the uh, center of Bonilla functions, they are located uh, in this uh, triangular fashion around the point where the density of states is peaked. Therefore, there is an overlap between this side and this side this side and this side and this side and this side and those uh, overlaps promote um, terms like this. Mm, okay, thank you. Okay.